Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Ten minutes for eight is the time. Back to our conversation concerning Sir Lindsay Hoare's intervention in that story. But let's go back to the importance of events in Ukraine. Many people, of course, I think there is a fair argument why we're fixating on what might or might not be happening about Adam MP's legs when we're seeing what's going on in Ukraine. But let's get the latest on that. Conservative MP and Armed Forces Minister James Heapy joins me now. And I note in at least two of the morning newspapers today, the suggestions that the Russians now, or Putin, has started to target railways in Ukraine and railway stations. Minister, do you have more details on that? Good morning. Morning, Nick. I, I think that the the targeting of the rail network and the road network in uh, in Western and Central Ukraine is to be expected. To be honest with you, I mean, I think it needs to be. Uh, of course, we would expect that Russia would uh, uh, take all appropriate caution to avoid uh, civilian casualties. That, but it is very much an act of war to go after one another's supply lines, just as I have no truck whatsoever, no, no complaint whatsoever about the fact that the Ukrainians appear to be um, uh, launching strikes into uh, Russia to go after their logistics lines. It's, it's very much a part of war. And we know that one of the, uh, the, 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 the key risks in all of the military aid that we are sending is that there's a very, very long supply line from the NATO countries that border uh, Ukraine from there to the place where that way, those systems are now needed. And, um, you know, the Russians have spotted that too. Were he to seek your counsel then, would you advise the Prime Minister to take another train journey into Ukraine, or has that now become too dangerous? Well, uh, Nick, the, the danger was there a couple of weeks ago, uh, and that should just underline how extraordinarily brave it is for the Prime Minister, um, for Secretary Blinken and Secretary Austin, and all of the other Western leaders who have made that journey to show their solidarity with President Zelensky and to visit Key. It is, um, you know, that is a brave thing to do, given that, uh, you know, the railway lines and the roads are clearly going to be targeted because they are military supply lines as much as they are the route through which high-level international visitors get to Kiev for uh, uh, diplomacy. Um, there seems to be an outbreak of early deaths among oligarchs. Newsweek publishing the number at six. Does the government have any intelligence on this? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, we are all aware of the sort of methods that uh, that the Kremlin have used in the past to go after people who show dissent both within Russia and beyond, including on our own soil. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, um, well, as Ben noted after he and I were banned from Russia uh, the other weekend, uh, he was rather relieved because um, they have a nasty habit of disappearing defence ministers that he that Putin disagrees with. Um, but I, I, I don't have any direct intelligence about the thing to which you refer, um, but it all seems part of the standard Kremlin playbook, to be honest. What about the idea that identities of more than 100 potential British Army recruits have been hacked from a UK defence co computer in a possible Kremlin intelligence sting? Do you have anything on that? Well, I mean, I think if they were hacking the recruitment uh, uh, system, that is clearly a very poor reflection on our own IT. And I'm aware of, uh, 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 of those reports. And I know that uh, my colleague, Leo Doherty, that looks after uh, recruitment, has ordered an urgent review of uh, our IT security as a consequence. But, you know, I, I, that, that, that feels like a very odd intelligence target, given that you would be targeting the you know, newly trained, very junior soldiers. Uh, I would have thought that the Kremlin would have had higher intelligence targets than that. But still, there's a point about our own IT security and then a, a sort of question about whether or not that's really something the Russians would want to go after. Minister, will a meeting without tea or biscuits take place concerning those who've allowed this breach? Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, I think... Um, Leo, like Ben Wallace, is um, is a is a retired Scots Guards officer, and they um, they dish you out quite they dish out quite crunchy bollockings in the Scots Guards. So I um, I wouldn't want to be uh, heading into Leo's office to uh, to um, to have to uh, to be on the receiving end of it. But look, this is I mean I just this 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 is. Yeah, we've, got, we've got to get the basics right. It's, it's, it's all well and good sending all the stuff that we are to Ukraine, and that is proving decisive. It's having genuine strategic effect. 
But at the same time, you know, the, the, the MOD needs to do the small things right as well. I think by and large we do. This is a fantastic organisation within which to be a minister. But when people get it wrong, we've got a great ministerial team and we hold them to account. Well, you're certainly holding your staff to account. You and your colleagues are to be applauded because um, when Jacob Rees-Mogg did his tour of various offices, we find that 67% of staff working for you and Ben Wallace and others are behind their desk. It was one of the highest numbers in the government. What would you say to some of your colleagues in, shall we say, the DWP, Department of Work and Pensions, where it's the mid-20s, 24%? Why are you doing so well? They're doing so poorly. Uh, so I think that they, to, to be fair, in this building very, during the very height of the pandemic, there will have been more people working than just about any other building around Whitehall. And the buildings around Whitehall where there would have been comparable would have been others where national security is the business of the day. Simply because, you know, you can have laptops that give you secret connectivity, but so much of the work that we do in this building is a top secret. And that is something that has to be done within the building on very, very, very secure IT systems. Um, and so some of the MOD being ahead of the pack will be reflective of the classification of the material with which we work. Um, I, but I do think the macro point is that we are beyond the pandemic now. We're into a phase of kind of endemic. Uh, and whilst I, I rather celebrate that we've learned how technology can give us much more flexibility within our working practices, and that allows us to be better parents, better spouses, and you know to sort of to take advantage of a little bit of flexibility, I think that those who are still working from home all the time probably need to consider that it's time to get back behind their desk for uh, as much of the week as they're able, because I think that the human interaction that comes from all being in an office is very valuable and I think it's more productive. Minister, last couple of points. I sense you'll be on exactly the same page as I with the newspaper that wrote that article about Angela Rayner. The content was offensive and ugly and misogynistic. But should the author and possibly the editor be called in by Sir Lindsay Hoyle? Is this not an interference with the the workings of a free press? Minister. No, because I don't... I mean, I I think if Lindsay had gone down a route of threatening uh, the access of that journalist to House Commons, that would have been a mistake, but he hasn't. I, I wasn't in the chamber to hear him make his statement, but what I understand is that he made the point that, you know, he jealously guards freedom of speech and the rights of a free press. But I do think that as the Speaker of the House of Commons, he is responsible to all 650 members and a lot of female, in fact, all female colleagues that I've spoken to since Sunday have reflected to me that what was said about Ange is reflective of you know, of, of what they have to deal with day in, day out. And I think for the Speaker to just turn around to... Fleet Street and say, look, you know, these people who come here, whether they're male or female, hold them to account, scrutinise what they say. But fundamentally, they are decent people driven by a sense of mission to serve their communities in our country. And, you know, reflecting, you know, and this sort of misogyny should just have no place in in how their work is reported. I think that's a good thing for the speaker to be doing. I think it's important that the prime minister, me and everybody else, men, stand up for the fact that our female colleagues shouldn't have to put up with this sort of crap. Uh, Lastly, it was reported that next week, the local elections, there is a possibility Conservative losses could be in the high hundreds, 700, 800 councillors. That would be the end of the Prime Minister's tenure, wouldn't it, as leader of the party? Well, let's see what happens. My reflection is that on the doorstep, uh, it's not as bad as I think in the Westminster bubble people think. I don't think it necessarily reflects what the national polls are showing either. But the British people are infinitely wise, whether that be in referenda, general elections or local elections, and they will make their voice heard. And politics reacts because that's how politics works. In the meantime, today the cabinet is meeting to discuss the cost of living. That is because that is the number one priority of people in this country. And that's what government must continue to do, to deliver on the people's priorities. And right now, that means helping them with their bills at the end of each month because people are struggling to get by. Grateful for your time today, Minister. As ever, thank you. Armed Forces Minister James Heapy appearing here on LBC, where at eight o'clock, it's almost exactly, uh, Thomas Watts has the LBC headlines. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, the UN Secretary-General Antonio Guterres is due to meet the...